we are all just sitting here like, we are so sick of Brandon Ayuk. We are so sick of talking about him. We're so, I can't, and we cover all 32 NFL teams. I can't imagine how sick you are of Brandon Ayuk. What, what's the vibe here? Is there any chance he's not a 49er in week one? Man, it's weird. I feel like the 49ers go through like a crop rotation every year of some contract extension debacle. And it's just yeah. like it, next year we got Brock Purdy, so it's not going to stop. But, you know, this is the since the new CBA, I feel like Le'Veon Bell should receive like some type of credit for this because the new CBA has completely disallowed holdouts from rookie contracts. It just doesn't even make sense to, to do that. So now you have all this kind of posturing and social media, whatever, and requesting trades and doing, you know, totally courty remakes with Jalen, da Jaden Daniels on TikTok or whatever. He has no leverage, none. Uh, the fifth year contract, 14.1 million for Brandon Ayuk. It's not up to him. He's under that contract no matter what. What? What? Why are you shaking your head? You're welcome. Are you sick of hearing about Brandon Ayuk and his contract shenanigans? Well, too bad, because we're going to talk about him. If Ayuk does remain with the 49ers this year, though, what are their plans for rookie receiver Ricky Pearsall? And is a more mobile Brock Purdy going to deliver more fantasy production in 2024? John Chapman of the 49ers Rush podcast was able to stomach some more Ayuk speculation for me as we broke down the defending NFC champs. I'm Joe Dolan. Make sure to like this video, leave a comment, and of course, subscribe to the Fantasy Points YouTube feed for 32 fantasy football breakdowns of all 32 NFL teams. This is the fantasy franchise focus for the San Francisco 49ers. John, I uh, I obviously work in fantasy football, and I host uh, the SiriusXM morning show uh, on, on SiriusXM Fantasy Sports Radio. And I can tell you, every day our producer comes up with a list of news, notes, and nuggets. That's what we call it. And we that's what we discuss at like the top of the show. And in our group chat for that show, we are all just sitting here like, we are so sick of Brandon Ayuk. We are so sick of talking about him. We're so I can't and we cover all 32 NFL teams. I can't imagine how sick you are of Brandon Ayuk. What what's the vibe here? Is there any chance he's not a 49er in week one? Man, it's weird. I feel like the 49ers go through like a crop rotation every year of some contract extension debacle. And it's just yeah. like that next year we got Brock Purdy, so it's not gonna stop. But you know, this is the since the new CBA, I feel like Le'Veon Bell should receive like some type of credit for this because the new CBA has completely disallowed holdouts from rookie contracts. It just doesn't even make sense to to do that. So now you have all this kind of posturing and social media, whatever, and requesting trades and doing, you know, totally courty remakes with Jalen, da Jaden Daniels on TikTok or whatever. He has no leverage, none. Uh, the fifth year contract, 14.1 million for Brandon Ayuk. It's not up to him. He's under that contract no matter what. And then they can even leverage, they could franchise tag him next year, very similar to what happened to T Higgins. But the thing that's been different is Debo, and Brandon and Ayuk are besties. And what did Debo do last year? This exact same playbook. Yeah. And what happened to Debo? He got the extension right before the season started. So it's just rinse, repeat. It worked for him. Hopefully it works for me. And yeah, I'm exhausted. Um, I do not follow players on social media anymore because I'm a 49ers guy. And I don't want to know. I, don't, <laughs> I just don't yeah. want to know what's going on out there. He'll be playing for the 49ers this year. Do you think an extension could be possibly in the cards down the line? I mean, obviously money can solve all things, but uh, they obviously have passed that deadline for this year. But uh, it, can there be a wink nod kind of situation here? Man, I think if it doesn't get done by the season start, then no, I don't. Because the main benefit of getting that extension done, which I want to happen, I think Brock Purdy wants it to happen. I think Kyle Shanahan wants it to happen. I think Ayuk wants it to happen. But it's that $26 million threshold they're stuck at. He wants the 30. But you don't get the cap relief savings unless you get that extension done this year. Because that $14.1 yeah. million will hit the books this year um, if, if that doesn't get done. So I don't know. I, I think the 
longer this goes on, it's much more realistic that he plays on the fifth year option and then they tag and trade next year's off season. And we'll be right back at it all over again. What percentage odds would you put it at just for people who are drafting Brandon Ayuk? Oh, you know, he can end up in Pittsburgh and be the one or in Washington and be the one. What percentage would you put that on that happening before the season? I'm saying 92% chance he is in a 49ers jersey this year. If they were going to trade him, it would have taken place before the draft. You're not going to get anything for him now, even if it is a player-for-player player trade, which almost never happens in today's NFL. Uh, I'm going 92% with okay. the 49ers, 4% Commanders, 4% Steelers. That's how I'd break it down. Uh, dude, I, I'm so sorry. I've got you fired up already. It's early morning out there on the West Coast, and you're already heated. Let's talk Let's, let's talk. Uh, let's talk a little uh, something that's a little bit happier. Christian McCaffrey's extension, you know, it seems like every year, and, and the 49ers, by the way, are not uh, not unique about this, that, you know, drafting Isaac Orendo on day three of the draft, they, they're 49ers draft a running back every year. But every year, it seems like the coaches are like, ah, you know, this year, we're going to pull a little bit back from Christian, you know, just a little bit. And every coaching staff that has ever said that has lied because they're like, oh, oh, oh yeah, we have this guy. He's just going to play every snap. He's the consensus number one overall player in fantasy football, as I'm sure you're well aware. Uh do you think that Isaac Orendo or Elijah Mitchell could see a little bit more work this year? Yeah, I think a little bit more. And Shanahan was asked this very question. He's like, you know, not, you know, we don't want to get him fewer snaps, maybe fewer rushes. Mm -hmm. I think that the the receptions and the targets, I think, could go up considerably. But I mean, Christian McCaffrey not coming off the field. Let's just be very, very honest. Now, Kyle Juszczyk might come off the field. The tight end two might come off the field. Uh, Juwan Jennings or the wide receiver three might come off the field. But whenever you see Christian McCaffrey out there, linebacker safeties, high alert, you've got to be worried about everything, even if he's not in the backfield. So will the overall touches or snaps go down? I do not believe so. Could the carries go down? He had 272. Could that drop to 250? All right, well, that's 22 you know, carries less. That's not even one or two carries a game difference over the course of 16 snaps. So uh, this is a guy who finished 100 fantasy points over the number two running back last year. Don't expect that to change as long as he's healthy. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the 49ers first round draft pick, Ricky Pearsall, who's on the non-football injury list. First and foremost, before we get into Pearsall in general, is there anything to worry about there with Ricky Pearsall? No, it's not a long term issue. They're not like he went through all of OTAs and mini camps in a blue non contact jersey. He's been working out nonstop with Jacob Cowing and Debo leading up just last week. So it's not one of those things. My biggest concern, just from a draft evaluation player, Ricky Pearsall is awesome. He does not play through physical press man coverage um, throughout his route very well. He gets redirected way too easily. So my biggest draft knock on him was, all right, can he play through NFL physicality before the catch? We know he's tough. We know he's brave. We know the circus catches, all those things. But can his routes stay on timing and spacing through physical contact from defensive backs? Well, guess what? We still don't know. Yeah, because he's going to be out there to blue non-contact jersey again. So long term issue. No, but this is the one hurdle I see for him in playing time in the NFL is because, again, you turn on that floor to tape. You have to hide him in the slot. And whenever a DB puts his hands on him, the dude goes flying. So I think it's something that he will adapt to. But this just delays the NFL learning process to get to that level so hopefully he gets healthy fully cleared and we can kind of see him because the Niners DB in practice they're one of the most physical corners out there in the NFL so he's going to get the lesson it's just how soon and what what would his role be this year Let, let's just presume Brandon Ayuk's in the Niners uniform as you said is going to happen you know the thing about Ayuk that, that our guy Brett Whitefield really liked was the route running the polish mm -hmm. you know the the and a, and a willing blocker despite the fact that he um he might not be the best at the catch point in terms of physicality. What what could his role be? Presuming Debo and Ayuk are both healthy and on the field, that's the million dollar question among you know 49er circles and beat writers. He's playing all three wide receiver positions, lining up at all three wide receiver positions. Personally, I think he is designed for the Z role, the Debo role. That kind of you know you see him in the misdirection jet sweeps. Now he's not a Debo type player. 
where he's just like a brick house that's just going to run through linebackers. Right. He's much more skittish and all those things. So I want the Z in slot role. I, I don't want him focusing on all three. And it's funny because a lot of people are like, oh, Brandon Ayuk, Ricky Pearsall is the long-term replacement. I'm not so sure the X role, that true number one wide receiver role is best for Pearsall. I think he could do it. But I think that Z role, he is that is what he was at Arizona State. That is what he was at Florida. I think that suits his skill set better because you can manipulate the coverage uh, much better with him. And I think he'd be more used that way. So I want him in that Z and that slot role. And I think there's some snaps out there. Fantasy-wise, I hate to tell you this, you're going to have to be patient with Ricky Pearsall. Yeah. They redshirt everybody. So – this year, if you're in a redraft league, I'm sorry, man. You're talking late, 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 maybe. Dynasty, different story. Yeah. So um, would you say that at this point in time, Ricky Pearsall is behind third and Juwan, Juwan Jennings on the depth chart? Yeah. With the extension, I think you have to say that. And I know there's somebody listening to this like, you don't spend a first-round draft choice and then put them behind Juwan Jennings, who only had 19 catches last year. And I'm going to say, here and say eh, Shanahan will. He does not believe in rookies. He doesn't want to trust rookies. He believes in the red shirt process. He's a college coach. He just didn't know it. And so, like, it's just, it's going to take time. And there's Ricky Pearsall before the bye week and after. So if you are in a league and the owner gets frustrated, I'm telling you, mid-season target trade, Ricky Pearsall, it's going to pay off for you. If somebody gets, you know, they're impatient, capitalize, take advantage of that. Is Jacob Cowing uh, kind of like, uh... Somebody they're going to take advantage of with the new return rule. Um, smaller, undersized guy, but he can fly. Uh, the fourth round rookie. I think so. I think that's where he starts. And I think, again, you know, I talked about where Pearsall should be. I think Cowing is the truest X wide receiver on this roster, not named Ayuk. And so if you are one of those tinfoil conspiracy theorists that thinks Ayuk's getting traded, man, go grab Cowing. Because I think that's where he's going to start at. Um, you know, we see we saw Tank Dell last year in this exact same system for the Houston Texans and Bobby Slowick, Shanahan disciple. I think the 49ers just kind of copy and paste and see if we could kind of plug that in. Again, not going to get a lot of snaps early. The mm -hmm. 49ers brought back every wide receiver that they had on the roster, but. We don't have a 4-3 guy like him that sh that's that small, tiny, mighty mouse, Tank Dell type. I, I feel like people should be more excited about cowing than they are. So one of the things that we I've, I've always um, you always see with the 49ers is how much they appreciate blocking from their skill position players. And I'm not just talking like the Brandon Ayukes and the Debo Samuels, but the Jawan Jennings and the Charlie Warners of the world. Charlie Warner's not on this roster anymore, the number two tight end. He left to go to the Falcons, and he played an important part of what the 49ers did in the run game and, and in pass protection. Is there a number two tight end behind George Kittle who's going to see a lot of snaps in that role, or is there, or, or is are we going to see kind of a change for that number two from the 49ers this year? Yeah, I don't think the tight end position fell the way they wanted to this offseason. If I would be honest with you, I think they went like zero for five. They bring in mm -hmm. Eric Salbert, who I think is probably going to be the true Charlie Warner tight end two blocking role. Uh, long NFL career was actually drafted in the same round uh, or the same draft as uh, George Kittle to the Falcons. Mm -hmm. um, but I think he's going to be that tight end two A for run blocking. And I think their tight end kind of two B receiving option. They brought in Logan Thomas late. One of the last kind of transactions for the 49ers. Yeah, and that fell under the radar quite a bit because when I saw his name on the roster, I was like, oh, yeah, I, I totally forgot about that. Exactly. And so like I think he's a guy that could come in and be a 25 catch guy as a tight end too that's going to be split out, do all kind of the extra stuff. And again, like with the caveats to the 49ers, George Kittle's incredible. I mean, the only 1000 yard tight end last year during the regular season, but he does miss time with how physical he plays. If he does miss time, tight end waiver wire, I'm telling you Logan Thomas better be number 1 that week. So Brock Purdy obviously um, has executed the Shanahan system just in, in, impeccably well in his first two years, especially for a young player. It is a system that has gotten great numbers out of Jimmy Garoppolo. It's gotten great numbers out of Nick Mullins when he's gotten when he's gotten starts. What is it about? Like this is not going to be the, Brock Purdy is one of the most polarizing players to talk about on social media. I completely understand it. What is it that he does differently though than somebody like a Jimmy Garoppolo who also put up. Let's let's take injuries out of the equation. We know that what that's a problem with Jimmy. 
But what does he do differently, maybe a little bit better than Jimmy Garoppolo, that is going to make him somebody that the 49ers are going to be excited to sign to a contract extension? Uh, two things come to mind right off the bat. Number one is processing speed. This dude knows where to go, understands blitzes and coverages much better. His rookie year, much better than Jimmy Garoppolo did in his seventh year. And mm -hmm. it was just evident that very first Miami game where he went out there, they blitzed nonstop. He knew where everything was coming from. That's number one. He knows where to, he is a Shanahan designed robot mentally. Number two, improvisation. Like he's not the athlete that everybody thinks he is, but man, he's got that quick area burst, can get out of the pocket. You look at the playoffs last year, Niners were behind in every single game. But Brock Purdy turned to moving with his feet and getting yards after, you know, extending plays, looking deep outside of the pocket. So the improvisation, I really think Kyle Shanahan protected Brock Purdy coming off the shoulder injury last year, quarterback sneaks and rush attempts and all that stuff. That went out the window in playoffs. I think we're going to see a little bit more mobile Brock Purdy. Not that you're calling zone reads and quarterback pulls, but I think he could use his feet a little bit more than he did last year. And for fantasy, you know, that's everything because of now th those points count way more than passing yards. And I think even if it's just something like 15 yards a game, uh, you know, I'm a big better. I'm going to be betting the over on Brock Purdy rush, rush yards for like probably the first month of the season till they catch up on it. But uh, improvisation, processing power, that's what makes Brock special. Yeah, that's that's going to be really interesting to see. I'll, I'm going to be taking that because those are the prop bets that you, you want to make the low number like that, that like the book feels like it's got to throw out there. Uh, but like, you know, the, the higher numbers, those are the ones that are that you're going to be betting a losing uh, have a losing right. edge on. Yeah. So I'm going to be taking that to heart. So uh, when it comes to Purdy, the games where he struggled the most last year, the 49ers and, and look, it, just, it was outsized with him, but quarterbacks struggle when some of their best linemen or their best receivers are out. I get it. So our, we have a former NFL scout on staff who really, really likes the 49ers offensive line. And 49ers podcasters fans were like revolting. They're like, our line stinks. It's, it, it's what costs us the Super Bowl. Where are you at on the offensive line? And could that be a potential bugaboo for Brock Purdy in his third season? You know, continuity on the offensive line is such a underappreciated thing. You're returning all five starters from last year. And, you know, everybody talks to the Super Bowl about how the offensive line, you know, folded or whatever else. You had one player who was a backup. John Feliciano got hurt, um, you know, in the second quarter. And then yeah. you bring in Spencer Burford, who has a lot of starting experience. He made one bad read. One bad read. Aaron Banks, the left guard, was playing with turf toe. Um, like, there's just a lot of... There's a lot of facets that go into that. You got to give credit to Steve Spagnola uh, and what they do in Kansas City. He's the best defensive coordinator in the NFL. So that that's whatever. Having said that, the offense walked off the field three times in the fourth quarter in overtime with the lead. Yeah. And, and so, like, for a Shanahan thing, all the fans thought, oh, first, second round pick, we're going to be drafting offensive linemen. Shanahan said that's not the way to make Brock Purdy better. When Debo was out, Brock Purdy struggled. So what do we do? Let's go get Ricky Pearsall. Um, let's give him the options because Brock Purdy, he tells Shanahan all the time. I don't like play action. He doesn't like, play, like Shanahan did the least amount of play action he's ever done last year mm. because Brock Purdy wants empty sets. He wants to see what the coverage is and all those things, because again, that processing power. And so I think we're going to see a lot more than that. The offensive line is good. It's not great. But it's enough to get to the Super Bowl and have one of the best offenses in the NFL. And yeah, you take away one or two plays for that offensive line. I think the Niners are Super Bowl champs. But are is that worth spending a first yeah. round pick at thirty one? How many number thirty one overall tackles are starters? But then you look at the wide receiver position. It's like, oh man, you can still get great studs at the back end of the first early second round. Offensive yeah. tackle, I don't think so. Yeah, I, you feel like if that if if, if uh, Spencer Burford's uh, uh, brain fart happens in the second quarter on like yeah. second and seven, you know, it doesn't it doesn't even register as as again. That's just kind of how football works. So, John, um, obviously Brock Purdy next season the extension. We have a long way to go. Who knows what's going to happen with Dak Prescott? Um, I had Marcus Mosher on from the Locked On Cowboys podcast, and he thinks this is Dak Prescott's last year. It, not like 100%, but he's like, it, it, it's better than a coin flip that he's not back. What kind of numbers are we looking at for Brock Purdy? Oh, it's got to be really high. Uh, it's got to be, 
you know, we're sitting at 50, you know, in the 50s now. I think probably 55s at that point. I'm hoping he does a super long deal. Yeah, And again, like everybody pays attention to how much per year. That is not the way to look at these contracts, especially quarterbacks. It's the guaranteed money and cap hits. Like you can talk about, you know, Kyler Murray and Deshaun Watson. And in the same breath, you could talk about Jalen Hurts and Lamar Jackson. But you look at the way the construct of the cap hits and guaranteed money work, those aren't even close to the same. Two of those do not affect the teams whatsoever, whereas Deshaun Watson and Kyler Murray literally hamstringing those organizations. Mm -hmm. So hopefully the Niners, which there's other contracts that got to be done too for the 49ers, but it's a long-term deal. They push it back. Brock Purdy's making right at a million dollars this year. He's the lowest quarterback out of all three on the 49ers against the cap. Uh, Josh Dobbs is making more. Brandon Allen is making more. Like, this dude deserves to get paid. Shanahan believes in him. He's not going anywhere. He's going to be the quarterback for the next decade, and he's going to get paid. John Chapman is the host of the 49ers Rush podcast. Obviously, the, the poor man's been talking about Brandon Ayuk. I'm sure you're having Brandon Ayuk dreams, and you have to wake up and oh. say, was that real? Did I did I look at that when I was having a cocktail last night? Like, uh, oh, uh, uh, believe me, I understand the pain, but you can follow him through his pain at JL underscore Chapman on Twitter on X, and obviously check out the 49ers Rush podcast on YouTube or wherever it is that you consume your content. John, thank you for being a three-timer on the Franchise Focus series. It's been a pleasure, and uh, we'll talk to you again at some point. Thanks, Joe. You're the man.